Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Let's go. Let's do it. Yay. Everybody's here. Barely. <laughs> Kenzie just got off Neon Tree's tour bus, got dropped off at the station. And oh, yeah. Then... Made it in the nick of time. How about it? <laughs> so last night was the Q101 pop-up, the free show at the Cubby Bear with Neon Tree's. Uh, smashing success from what I hear. Now, I was supposed to be in attendance, and I'm still fighting this pneumonia thing, and I didn't want to cough on people all night. So no, we appreciated it. I just, you know, right? Like, do you think I should go? I'm like, nope. Yeah, <laughs> I, I certainly don't. And I always feel like I let people down in that situation. I can't get over it, but everybody, you and and Case and uh, everybody was just like saying, "Yeah, stay home, bro. It's yeah. okay. We got you." And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, now I feel like I really missed out, though. No, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Don't worry, you weren't missed at all. Everyone had a great time. <laughs> um, it didn't feel like there was, like, nothing missing from the night, huh. you know? Huh. So it was okay. Yeah. I nothing for you to stress about. I'm getting that vibe, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he was hoping came everyone in. would come in and go, man, let's say it really sucked. Like, there's no Brian, <laughs> yeah. no Brian stage announcement. Yeah. Neon Trees didn't want to go on because they found out you weren't there. <laughs> That's what he wanted to happen. Thousand percent correct. <laughs> I wish it was a disaster. I wish it was yeah. like the worst Q101 pop up yeah. ever. I know. No, it was actually one of the better ones. That was awesome. It was really good. Yeah, people were lining up at like noon yesterday. Yes. And uh, yeah, so yeah, tell me, uh, it was uh, it was just a fantastic night, oh, obviously. It was so fun. So Pelafina opened up Chicago band that we also had at Picnic, and they're really kick ass. Yeah. And they sounded really good at the Cubby Bear. Cool. They really like the. The voice like bellowed in there. I was like, okay. I showed up and I thought I was like really late because it it you know how the headliner is louder? Sure. Always. Yeah. Um, it was pretty loud. We rolled up. I'm like, oh God. I, what time is it? And it was Pelafina. They like they crushed it, which was awesome. Obviously, Modelo span uh, sponsored the night and like very good drinks. They probably partook too much in that. Love Modelo. You have to realize this is my first pop-up that I've ever got to have a drink at. That's right. Because I was just pregnant. Forever, yeah. so um, that longer was, than that most. Was fun. Yeah, that was actually a really good. It was really fun to watch a band and have a drink. Like that was awesome. Hell yeah! A lot of our Winters Community Bank people got in early. Yeah, there was that a card. big old scream for that. They were all in the front, so they got in early and they walked right up to the front, so they could be like touching neon trees, which is awesome. If you haven't gone to the Cubby Bear, super intimate, so there's really not a bad place, which is awesome. But being right in front. You're basically on stage with them, which is yeah. really, really cool. And then, of course, Neon Trees was just really kick ass. Um, I'm a fan of bands that have awesome voices. And that sounds funny, but not everyone does have that. And, like, their voice, like, and the Neon Trees, like, they can, they can actually really sing. And yeah. they sound great live, which I wasn't sure. I'd never seen them live. Um, bouncing around stage, tons of energy. It was, like... It made Monday night a lot more fun. I'm like, this feels great. And I kind of forgot it was Monday. And I'm like, this is, this is, I'm just going to stay out. This is phenomenal. I forgot I had work. I got home and I'm like, good Lord, I need a show prep. It's like 1130. It yeah. was so fun. So you're saying uh, it was a good time. It was, uh, really it was good. not like a disaster. I was just the hoping for The only mistake I made is, okay, one, I was going to wear a neon dress. I really wanted to wear this neon dress that I had. It's like a neon green because, haha, mm. very fun. Haha, -ha, I'm It was going to be quite the caption. I was very excited. I put it on and I realized I haven't worn this dress since I lived in Tampa. And I don't know what happened the last time I wore it, but I was obviously wasted because there was like grenadine and like soda spills all. I obviously got drunk and tripped in the dress, okay, and didn't realize that. About two or three years ago. And I'm like, okay, like like seven. Oh, I know okay. in a long time. And I'm like, okay, so I better need to wash this. And then I was I was trying to find an outfit last minute because then that sucks. I know you can just rip off a black t-shirt, but that doesn't work for me. I can be ready in three minutes. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I put on this really fringy skirt. I have the picture up, but it's, it was long. And it's almost like a pencil skirt. It goes all the way to your feet. And I'm like, okay, this is cute. Fun vibes. Let's go. I thought it was going to have more stretch. And I drive a Jeep Wrangler. 
I couldn't get in my car. Oh. Like, because you can't lift your legs up. Yeah. And I'm 5'2". So I had to, ju- like, swan dive into my car, and then I would I grabbed the passenger seat and dragged my body <laughs> in. <laughs> and I have to say, as somebody that walked Kenzie to her car as we were leaving the Cubby Bear last night, and she told me about this ahead of time, because with every Kenzie story, it's never, I got in my car and I got to the place and there were no issues. There's always nope. a caveat <laughs> there. And she's like, I couldn't even get in my car with the outfit that I'm wearing tonight. And I go, all right, yeah, 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 whatever. And then I, like, give her a hug and I say goodbye. If you've ever thrown a dart at a dartboard, <laughs> that is the angle in which Kinsey <laughs> got in her car last night. I've never it. seen anything like it before. Uh, and then I, was... I have to pull my body in. I look like the girl from The Ring coming out of the well. <laughs> I couldn't get in the damn car. There's, there's no CPD body body cam footage of this no, anywhere. I wanted to have her do it again so I could take a video, but it took her so long to get in the damn car. I know, uh, no, no, it's not an easy repeat. Well, that's and unfortunate. It's not easy either. You gotta like slide. You just gotta slide down and catch yeah. yourself. Huh? It was a. It was a lot. Of, I was sweating. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. She was airborne. I mean, feet off the ground, just in mid flight, getting into this jeep. Well, it was too late by the time I found out that I couldn't get in my car. Mm. I couldn't go change again. No, God forbid. I was. It would have taken forty five more minutes. <laughs> Well, it sounds like a wonderful, <laughs> amazing, fun. memorable evening without me. Yes, no, it, really it was. Can I, can I tell you what I was doing while you guys were doing all that fun stuff? What? So I, I coughed all day with this pneumonia that I'm recovering from, if you uh. haven't heard about that. And then I got really hungry because I've lost about 12 pounds now because you cough so much you just don't want to eat. And you know those Kirkland crinkle cut sea salt chips? Yes. They're so good, but they they're really good. crunchy. They like, you, you have to go for it. And I was coughing. So hard, I bit into a crinkle chip and somehow pulled a muscle in my jaw. (laughs) And I was starving, and I could not eat any more chips because every time I tried to bite in, like this pain shot to my ear. Okay, so you're coughing. I coughed while eating a while eating a chip. Why didn't you choose something easier to eat than the world's crunchiest chips? Because they looked so good, and I I was hungry. The chip chunks everywhere. Like, that's like shrapnel. And when you're eating a chip, you can't cough up a chip. Okay, don't worry about the shrapnel of the chips. Worry about my jaw, and you I couldn't can... eat another chip after that. So you, is your muscle still pulled? It you... just feels a little tight. Yeah, like I can talk, but if I try to, like, eat something right now, it hurts. You know what you should do? What? Now's the time for you to start a juice cleanse and lose some weight. Hmm. You've already pulled the muscles in <laughs> your jaw. Okay. <laughs> I mean, can you make a juice cleanse, a juice out of chips? No, I'm not going to blend chips for you. <laughs> I don't think that's what she was saying. That's not what I'm saying. That's what I heard. <laughs> that's what I heard. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for a fact that makes your brain go. And over the years, the Simpsons have correctly predicted 31 major events in the future. So these things happened on the Simpsons shows in the last 35 years. And then they eventually happen. For example, Trump's presidency. They predicted that when you go to the episodes. Uh, Three Super Bowl winners they predicted. Uh, There's there's so many things the Simpsons have predicted. But now, some audio has been uncovered. Simpsons have predicted something else. What? The Huck Tua girl. They did not predict her. Now, I'll play the audio next when we come back here in the fact that makes your brain go. You judge for yourself if they correctly predicted the Huck Tua girl. In, uh, in a Simpsons episode. I don't, I don't know if I'm buying this. Well, you have to hear the audio to, to, uh, to see for yourself. You guys judge. But Simpsons have been pretty on point over the years of predictions. So coming up at 6.30, we'll have that for you. The Brian and Kenzie Show. Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. Q101. Well, it's time for a fact that makes your brain go... And The Simpsons has predicted everything from the Trump presidency to Super Bowls, 35 things from the last 35 years in the show they've predicted correctly. Now, this episode from 1992 possibly predicted the Huck Tu girl. And when I say that, does everybody know what I'm talking about? Do you think everybody by now has seen the video and it's been three yes, weeks? I think that we're, if you don't know, you're never going to know. It's yeah, for you. I mean, I want to I bring everybody in the party. It's a girl that was being interviewed and I don't have the audio ready now, but they were talking about uh, secrets in the uh, in, in the bedroom. The, the question, Brian, why don't you why don't you try to find the audio real quick here? Oh because the boy. question was, 
you know, what's a trick that'll keep a man happy in the bedroom? And, and she says, you got to hock to a... Spit on that thing. And spit on that thing. And it's just bizarre that in a world where we live in a 24-hour news cycle, everything is old as soon as it's new. This is the thing that has staying power. I remember when O.J. Simpson died. He died on a Thursday afternoon. We talked about it Friday. By Monday, it was old news. That doesn't make any sense to me. This has had staying power for weeks and weeks and weeks now. Okay, so I have the audience. You know what's audio. funny is that she just launched an Instagram, and her first thing is, this is my world, and she's posting, like, all these pictures, and she's almost acting like... She's an artist that, yeah. like, her, like, career finally <laughs> took off because she's supposed to yourself on stage and signing things. I'm like, well, let, let's let's settle down. Hey, you know you what? Know? Good for her. No, that's the world it. we that's the world we live no, in. Enjoy it, but it is hilarious because the Instagram captions have almost become inspirational, and it's just funny. <laughs> ah, so it's <laughs> it's hot it, to today's coffee. And get out there and win today. Something like that. Well, she wakes up and grinds every day. You know, yeah. it's just like, it's just funny. It's like, it, you know when somebody, like, finds their purpose? When you watch an artist finally take off and they're at arenas, and then you're just like, whoa, they found their purpose. She's, it's like, it's like that, only she's going favors for talking about spitting on that thing. And it's just, the quotes are funny. Like, the captions, I love it. Just to bring everybody in the party, here's the audio that went viral and did this, of course. Um, oh, you, you got to give him that hook. And spit on that thing. That's after he asked the question. <laughs> your secrets in the bedroom. So, okay, that's where we get there. Now, to The Simpsons, 1992. An episode called New Kid on the Block. One of my favorites. Oh, you know this one? Oh, my God, yes, because... I thought you meant the group. No, no, The <laughs> Simpsons episode. Because when I was single and I was flirting, I used to send photos of this episode, which is Bart and then this cool older girl in an army green jacket... I used to send that photo to the girls and be like, ah, this could be us. We could be hanging out like this. Now, this was New Kid on the Block. Bart gets a new neighbor named Laura, who, yeah. was, who was voiced by Sarah Gilbert from Roseanne. She oh. was the daughter of Roseanne. Which one? Uh, the, well, what was her Blonde? name? Blonde? Becky? No, no, the Darlene. other girl. Darlene. Darlene, right. Right? No. Was what? the blonde Darlene? No, Becky was the blonde. Becky was the blonde. And then they changed Becky. Yeah, Becky was a few different people. That Becky was, was like three different people. Remember the last episode of Roseanne where he says, they say they're the same, but they're not the same. Yeah, he like they, He's it. in a coma. They say they're the same, but they're not the same. All right, so here's the audio from that episode that could have predicted the Hawk to the girl, Sarah Gilbert, Gilbert, as Bart's new neighbor, and he's infatuated with her. Here it is. I was going to tell your fortune. Huh? Oh, man, you're going to be rich. Whoa. There's your mansion. There's a tennis court. And there's a swimming pool. See you later, Bart. <laughs> I'll never wash this hand again. So she spits on his hand. Phone. She She's saying, like, here's the tennis court. Here's the mansion. And then she spits on his hand. Hock to spits on his hand. And there's a swimming pool. Well, they didn't invent spitting. Oh. You think they invented spit? Maybe they did. <laughs> okay, sorry. Well, let's listen again. You've judged. I was going to tell your fortune. Huh? Oh, man. You're going to be rich. Whoa. There's your mansion. There's a tennis court. Hock to. And there's a swimming pool. See you later, Bart. <laughs> I'll never wash this hand again. We well, got to spit on that thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now you buy it. Now you believe it. So the whole time, this girl's been talking about a hand. And no one, no one realized. Maybe they're it's really a, making her out to be a whore, and she's not. Oh, just, you know, she's like, you just gotta shake their hand. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's advanced thirty years from the hand to downtown. No, mm. I think that's what she meant. Yeah, I don't know. You be the judge on that. That's one more thing that the Simpsons may have predicted added to the list. The hot to a girl, and uh, there you go. That's the fact. <laughs> Brian and Kenzie on Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We have Gil Curtis with your headlines just about 120 seconds away. Now, before we move on today, we have to pour one out. It's very sad. Very sad. We got to pour one out today. Today, Brian and Kenzie are pouring one out for Redbox. So Red, well, Redbox has declared bankruptcy. It's actually their parent company. The parent company of Redbox was called Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. It's the parent of DVD rental operator Redbox. It's filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Is that the one that owned the book series too? I don't think so. Chicken Soup know. for the Soul was the those it, books. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. But I could what if be wrong. The two things are named. <laughs> I have no idea. So uh, the bankruptcy protection comes after a series of financial struggles for the company, piling up unpaid bills. They have $1 billion in debt. 
uh, and they submitted this Friday in Delaware, where all bankruptcy seems to get filed. And they've lost uh, money. Now, listen, it seems like obvious, right? Because it's DVD rentals. You know, when's the last, when's the last time you stopped at a red box? I know, but they're only a dollar. I've, I've seen people get red boxes. I feel like they're still at McDonald's. I've seen a few at, like, at fast food restaurants. Yeah, well, I, I still see them yeah. everywhere. They're at the Jewel Osco by me. Yeah. I just, they're only a dollar. Do you think people are stealing them? Because, like, how's Red Box going to find me? <laughs> That's true. I always wondered that. Like, what are you going to do? I just think enough people aren't going anymore, and that's the problem. They must have to pay something to rent in front of Jewel, the box. There yeah, must be exactly. some rental fee for the There's box. There's a lot of overhead for Redbox, I would imagine. And also, Kenzie, to answer your question real quick, and I did just confirm this, it is the same company as the book series. It's an entire media company called Chicken Soup for the Soul. Huh. So they're oh, maybe in the book series would take them. Exactly. Books not, is also not, you know. That's the problem, is that they're in books and DVDs, which is not a great position to be in right now. Not, but it wasn't like, you know, the 2000s. Oh, yeah, they had a run. They were like, we're going to be billionaires. When Redbox hit, it was... It was a total game changer. It, it was, was completely a sniper it, shot, the yes. blockbuster. It was like to the head. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna go to Walgreens and I'm gonna leave with a new Adam Sandler DVD that I can for rent for a dollar. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I guess okay. I'm gonna invest my life savings I'm into this. I'm gonna go to McDonald's and this was the good days and get a meal for three dollars mm -hmm. an entire thing and then a. My whole night costs four dollars. Yeah. Oh, they have to do Transformers on DVD. Unbelievable. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make a stop. Okay. All right, listen, I'm gonna make a confession. Oh what? boy. I've never used Redbox, no. and I hope that doesn't make me sound privileged it in does. any way. It does. Listen, here's why though. A oh, one percenter over here. Yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with not wanting a deal because I'm cheap, man. We well, we do know that. But I have anxiety about picking a movie in front of other people. <laughs> but you're not in front of other people. Well, you do have to go to the box. You're outside, right? And you go up there and you pick a movie and, and you there leave. there might be a line. Yeah, and, and I just think I, have, I would much rather go to Blockbuster and peruse the aisles slowly with no one having their eyes on me, picking what I want to watch as entertainment, than that red box outside I'm naked. No, I, you're exposed. I, I always, I never felt comfortable, so I never did it. You're, you're right. It's like Kennedy on the back of that car, man. You're just free for the taking. I right. never red did box. the ones. That's a reference. <laughs> Jesus. Good Lord. An assassination. Well, that's what <laughs> I was, feels. As a woman, I never did the ones at gas stations. I just thought my back to everything with a small curtain where I'm focused on something completely different in the middle of the night outside wasn't the best idea. I'm so like, where, what business did you feel comfortable with the red like box? Like inside, because like, they were inside grocery stores and inside fast food restaurants, <laughs> well lit, a lot of people, staffing. The outside um, gas station ones, I did not partake in. Alone, at least. Yeah. Like, it's bad. This is a, if I die because I'm getting abducted because I'm renting a movie, it's going to suck. Weekend at Bernie's, too. That's how she died. Yeah. It's pretty sad. Doing what she loved, yeah. watching a movie. Doing what she loved. Did you guys ever, I guess you didn't, Brian, but Case, did you ever have to drive, like, three red boxes hoping you'd find, like, the new movie? 100% yes. Oh, yeah. you just spent your night finding red box locations hoping you'd get your hands on the brand new releases because some of the red boxes were super up to date they were they were fast moving they had the new releases and some of them you were like well it's the summer of 2008 i'd like to watch a movie that came out in 2008 and they're all movies from 2006 in there oh, absolutely it's well, that, like that's kind of my girls is available but i really <laughs> i wanted the new bad boys it's you only got three copies of that well that was also my other question is how could they fit my movies in there it's, it's only a, this big of a box. Well, I, you're I don't... not watching French noir films. You're looking for the latest Bad Boys sequel. How do you know what I was looking for that night? I know what you're looking they for. They also didn't have porn in there, so it was a hole that's a white for you. <laughs> there should have been a purple box for porn or something. Purple box? I don't know, some a different box. Yo, yeah, you're right. It could have looked like the eggplant emoji. That's actually a billion-dollar idea. Let's invest. However... Chicken soup for the soul should get into that. <laughs> well, if I was afraid to get to the red box and people watch what I was picking, I don't think I, could, I went to the purple box and did it. I don't know. Well, listen, it's a sad day. Pour one out for Redbox. And uh, we know people. I have a good friend that still is sad that Netflix stopped the DVDs. And there's a person that worked here, Pants, who still got the DVDs from Netflix when they, right. when they stopped that like five months ago or whatever. And Sony just announced that they're going to discontinue Blu-ray and DVD production, which as somebody who, look, I haven't bought a DVD in years. I don't, I don't want to front in that regard and make it seem like I'm buying DVDs all the time. 
But I do appreciate physical media, and it scares me that all of this stuff is vanishing with no replacement. Yeah. Just every, well, they, well all, I feel like all of our fun is getting taken away from us. Like, now you just, you, like, it, the option is just getting taken away to go get a movie, which, like, takes a little bit of time. You go pick it out with your family. It's fun. It's like, you just have to do it at home now. Like, that's it. Yep. Or buy one at the store, which I, they've kind of stopped doing that, too. We just keep scrolling at home, and then you say, ah, oh, there's nothing here. Nothing, nothing. At Netflix, like, 9,000 titles. Nothing. I don't see anything I like. Nope, nope, nope. Well, you're, it's too accessible where your kids, they fight so much over what they would like to watch. It's and they, they're, it's impossible to agree because they're just the 8,000 trailers that are overstimulating. And it's like, <laughs> I'm like, never mind. It's well, just, everyone's going to bed. <laughs> well, we're pouring out for Redbox. Use it while you can. They're a billion in debt. They're probably gone soon. It's very sad. Give uh, them your dollar. Help them out. Yeah. Just yeah, give them a dollar, like streetwise. You keep the DVD. You guys just take the dollar. <laughs> All right, here's Gil Curtis with your headlines. This is not headline news. A Florida man was arrested for shooting down a Walmart drone which deprived another Florida man of his beer, Twinkies, and smokes. Kevin Costner spent $38 million of his own money on Horizon. Unfortunately, he didn't listen to the voice in the sky that said, if you build it, they won't come. Larry David is celebrating his 77th birthday today, also celebrating the 30th anniversary of looking like he's 77. And July is National Cell Phone Courtesy Month. Though if your name is Karen, please don't let that stop you from putting your phone on speaker and having a screaming conversation in the middle of a crowded Starbucks. This is not headline news. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.